What's up, farming family? How y'all doing today? Today, we're checking out the Gearbox GBX 16mm. I've been playing with it. I'm going to be going over the specs, what I think about it, the control, the power. My brother's going to be going over it. You're also going to see a little bit of gameplay, so stay tuned for that. But let's get into this. I hope y'all are having a good day. Okay, let's get into the specs. The core thickness is 16 millimeter. The head shape is elongated. The weighted average is 8.5 ounces. The paddle length is 16.5 inches. The paddle width is 7.38 inches. The handle circumference is 4 inches. The handle length is 5.5 inches, which is pretty much standard for paddles nowadays. Everybody's coming out with 5.5 inches. The warranty is one year, which is longer than a lot of other companies. And the paddle surface is Torre T700 carbon fiber. This is their first raw carbon fiber paddle. And they are I don't know if they're going to release more, but when they first released it, I was kind of worried that they were getting away from their SST line. But that ended up not being the case. When it came to the power of the GBX, I felt like it was enough to play singles if you wanted to. But the problem was with it is you aren't going to be able to be as aggressive as you would with like the Legacy or the Carbon 1X or the Vatic Pro. It was a pr you know pretty poppy paddle for it not to have you know thermoforming or the foamed edges. So you could still technically play it in singles, but I probably wouldn't recommend it because you're not going to be as aggressive as the people that are playing against you. But it has enough power, you know, to do what you want to do, especially in doubles. Like it's not a weak paddle by any means. Okay, when it came to the control and the maneuverability, because they're essentially the same thing. I'm just going to put those together for now on. I was able to put shots where I wanted to put them without popping anything up. I mentioned in the power that it was, you know, a little poppy, but it wasn't like, you know, the thermoform paddles. So you was able, you know, to put the ball where you wanted to with ease without having to focus too much. Because with the thermoform paddles, you have to focus a lot more and concentrate a lot more on your soft hands and getting the ball over the net without popping it up. With this paddle, it seemed to be a little bit easier, I guess, because it doesn't have those two things. But I still feel like the thermoform paddles perform better overall in terms of the control, the power, and the spin. I really wish that Gearbox would have, you know, went the path of doing thermoforming and the foamed edges just to see what their version's like, to see if they can make a softer feeling version than what the other companies came up with. Because all the paddles that, you know, are coming out are kind of poppy. And it'd be really cool if they could figure out a way to get that dialed in with both of those and make it to where it was really, really soft. Okay, when it came to the spin, this is a raw carbon fiber paddle. Okay, it's going to be able to give, you know, adequate spin for what you're wanting to do. I'm not going to be able to give you no specific numbers or say, you know, this is, you know, one of the best spin paddles out there, but it is up there with the other raw carbon fiber paddles. I don't know if it's going to do the numbers like the Legacy Pro and the Vatic Pro and the Thermoformed ones. For some reason, the Thermoformed paddles and the Foamed Edge paddles seem to spin a lot more. I'm not exactly sure what that is, but I would say it's right underneath those though, because when I was doing it, I could still tell, you know, my top spin serves. We're still dipping down. You know, my slices were still slicing. <laughs> but yeah, overall, you're going to get enough spin out of this if, you know, if that's your problem and if that's what you're worried about. When it comes to the durability, Gearbox is known for basically having tanks <laughs> of paddles. Like, they last longer than, you know, all these other polypropane paddles. But, I mean, this is, I mean, this is also polypropylene paddle so that part of it you know will end up you know messing up a lot quicker than their sst core versions will but it's also a unibody design so it's not going to be snapping off at the handle like some of the previous um raw carbon fiber paddles used to do they basically fix that situation that's not going to be a problem anymore unless you're just doing something ridiculous like driving over it with a vehicle so i don't think the durability is going to be a problem at all other than the typical polypropylene you know honeycomb core breaking down over time but that's with every paddle like that I didn't use an overgrip on this one. I took off the regular grip and I put a lizard skin grip on it because I'm checking them out and a few other ones too. And I wanted to see how that felt. And it, it felt pretty good on this paddle. It wasn't, you know, too thick or anything like that. It was the perfect thickness. I also put lead tape, you know, around the throat and at the very top of it, like I did on the other CX-14. And I noticed a drastic difference in, you know, the way it played after I did it. I went out there the first few games without lead tape and, you know, I was, I was doing okay, but I wasn't, 
wasn't doing, you know, phenomenal at all when it came to third shot drops. But I ended up, you know, putting more lead tape. I put lead tape on it and I went out there. It's probably just a placebo effect for the most part. I know it has some effect on it, but it's it's a big mental thing for me too, to be honest. Okay, I didn't really get to talk to Gearbox much. I may have sent two messages back and forth to them because I didn't get this paddle sent to me by them. So I'm just reviewing this because I'm around the paddle. It literally has nothing to do with them sending it to me. So I don't know anything about the customer response time. But the other companies I've dealt with have been very quick. I don't know, you know, if you all have had good response time, you know, with Gearbox or not. If you have, leave it in the comment below and let me know because I'm very curious about that. That's what I'm going to do in these sections. If I haven't talked to the companies much, I'm going to, you know, hope that the subscribers or the viewers have so they can leave, you know, the feedback in the comment below for other people to see. For the price of this, it's $200. There are a lot of other options out there right now. You've got Rhombus, you have Vatic Pro, you've got Legacy Pro, you've got 6.0. All these companies are dropping paddles that are significantly cheaper than this. And they're raw carbon fiber. And they've got the you know new technology in it. Well, it's not new, but thermoforming and the foamed edges. They're unibody just like this one is. But unless you're a Gearbox person and you want to support you know their raw carbon fiber adventure, or venture and it might make them you know keep going into it and you know making more paddles with thermoform and foamed edges you never know but if you're not really like a crazy gearbox person i probably wouldn't recommend this for a raw carbon fiber player i would you know tell them probably to try out a vatic a legacy i would say carbon 1x but it's a little too expensive because i would choose this over the 1x just because of the value What's up, y'all? And this is Jalen here to give my thoughts on the Gearbox GBX. So for me personally, I really did enjoy the paddle a lot. Like the control and everything was really good and it felt great. But my problem comes in is at $200, you can buy paddles that are significantly cheaper. And I would really probably recommend going that route instead of buying the Gearbox GBX. But yeah, this has been my review of the Gearbox GBX. Overall, it was a really solid paddle. The only problem we really had with it was the price of it. If it was a cheaper price paddle, I would be like, yeah, I recommend it. You know, it didn't play, you know, bad. It doesn't have a small sweet spot. It's not going to snap at the handle. Overall, you know, it's a really good paddle. I just feel like it's slightly too much. Until next time, though, stay safe. Have a good day. Drink plenty of water. Peace.